Good evening, everyone. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder with the National Weather Service. It is the 17th of July, and as always, we encourage you to stay up to date with your local weather information around Alaska, and you can do that a lot of different ways. We like to tell you about the Alaska Weather Information Line. That's the number here, 1-800-472-0391. You can find us online at weather.gov slash Alaska or on Marine Band VHF. Uh, you can certainly find us on your cell phone or your mobile device. Mobile.weather.gov is a really fast way and low bandwidth way to get that information electronically. It's a little bit different than going to the full website, which we know is a kind of a heavy beast there if you're trying to use a lot of data. Uh, that's a great way to do it. If you'd like to use a very fast way, mobile.weather.gov should work a lot better for you, especially if your uh, connection's not super big. Uh, david.snyder at noaa.gov is how you find me if there's a question i can answer for you whether it's uh, where to find information or if it's just something that you're curious about please let me know i'd love to see a picture of your part of alaska too david.snyder at noaa.gov let's take a look at the fire danger it really hasn't changed a whole lot in the last few days we're still watching extreme fire danger here up across the upper parts of the yukon flats and out across the upper koyukuk valley we're also watching at least widespread high fire danger all the way down through the Anchorage Borough and into uh, the western parts of the Kenai Peninsula and the western Alaska Range. There's certainly some hot spots of extreme fire danger within that. And out across the west, high fire danger around Norton Sound and across the lower Kuskokwim Valley and into um, well, parts of the Yukon. Uh, we also have some limited areas of extreme fire danger uh, according to the Anchorage municipality itself. So uh, again, make sure that you're paying attention to burn bans and any restrictions that might be uh, in force across your area and uh, check before you burn every time. Let's take a look at the visible satellite picture and as that goes into motion, you can see an east to westerly flow wrapping around low pressure here across the northern Gulf. That has brought additional moisture into parts of central and southern southeastern Alaska and just in the last 24 hours or so parts of southern southeast have picked up a good one to two inches of rainfall much needed considering the extreme drought conditions that are still ongoing across southern southeast so that's very good news there and uh, you know if you're looking for dry sunny weather well you have to move out of southeast for a little while and way to find that it looks like that onshore flow will continue and uh, wet and kind of soggy conditions will be enforced there for a while as you look out to the west and south of ADAC you can see an area of low pressure there not terribly strong, but certainly one that's just kind of stuck in the flow with high pressure sitting out across the bearing. We have a wealth of clouds and stratus in place. Areas of fog should be expected to continue under very slow moving air out there with not a whole lot of force to change it up anytime soon. Across the north, you can see an onshore push coming in from the west to the Chukchi coast. That is an area of low pressure and several waves of that will be working from west to east as we go into the next several days and on into the weekend. Across the interior, generally clear conditions north and west of Fairbanks, a lot of sunshine there, and with that we are aiding in the development of shower and thunderstorm activity. That has been generally isolated at this point, but uh, certainly present, and just like we saw over the Chugach last night around Anchorage, no doubt that we can develop more shower and storms across the region, generally in an isolated to a widely scattered fashion. They'll be generally slow movers too, so if you get under one of those, you'll be under it for a while, it looks like, until it rains itself out. One of those disturbances that we were talking about moving out of the Chukchi Ocean and into part of Chukchi Sea and into the northwest coast has made its way up into the Brooks Range and across the North Slope. It's kind of parked there, so we've given that the stationary front symbol there, the red and blue together, meaning that neither the uh, warm air or the cold air is winning out right now. As that sits there, it will continue to trap some slightly cooler weather across the North Slope and the west. Uh, to the south of that, generally warm conditions and troughs of low pressure are working through. We have that east to westerly flow across the uh, Alaska Range and then that wraps around into low pressure across the central and western Gulf. As we move into tonight, the disturbance up north will pretty much fall apart. High pressure sitting up there across the Beaufort Sea Coast at 1,011 millibars. And because of the really warm temperatures, as you'll see here later in the marine forecast, uh, the water around the Chukchi and the Beaufort is not quite sea ice free, but certainly widespread open water. 
Low pressure sitting across eastern Asia and Russia is keeping areas of fog across the Chukchi. Uh, areas of light rain and some drizzle are found there. High pressure sitting across the Aleutian chain at 1,027 millibars is keeping that westerly onshore push into parts of southwestern Alaska. Showers continue across the Alaska range as we head through tonight. We will see areas of smoke, and over the next couple days, it's not going to be a big stretch to think that that smoke could get worse where you are. So if you've been seeing smoke already early in the week, that's probably going to get worse for a couple reasons. Areas across the interior are going to uh, do a little bit more of, of a controlled burn and trying to do some burnouts to limit uh, the wild nature of the wildfire, that could add more smoke to the eastern interior. And parts of south central, it uh, looks like conditions will be more favorable for trapping some of that smoke as conditions warm up. For southeast, we expect to see showers in place. Uh, clouds will be the rule there as we go into Thursday. We're also expecting a better chance for thunderstorm coverage across eastern parts of the interior and into south central, including the Susitna Valley and the Kenai Peninsula. So areas around Anchorage and the Chugach could also be affected by that. If you've got some outside plans, whether that's fishing, hiking, or just uh, general enjoyment, of the weather around town or anywhere where you are around south central and southeast, do expect thunderstorm activity to go up in the next 24 hours. Showers across southeast should be expected. That onshore flow will continue and a trough of low pressure helping to ring out the skies a little bit over your region could add some very beneficial rains to southern parts of southeast. Out across the Chukchi Sea, that low pressure area doesn't seem to move too much, but as we get into Friday, it gives a little kick eastward and ends up right along the Brooks Range. With that high pressure, we'll try and hold back any additional cool weather, but the boundary will sit right around the Brooks Range, and with that, we can expect some showers and probably drizzle, at least low clouds, expect uh, probably across the Chukchi Sea. High pressure is still in charge of the bearings, sitting uh, strongly in a decent position there just south of Adak and Atka. Things aren't going to move very quickly, but one thing it will be capable of doing is nudging this area of low pressure out of the way just a little bit more. And as it does so, it looks like it will move into position where it could produce some additional heat across the southern third of Alaska, including uh, maybe even southeast. This could bring much warmer conditions back into southern Alaska as we get into Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So keep watching that temperature in the backyard. It does look like it might be warming up a little bit. As we get into Thursday morning, mid to upper 50s for southeast, it looks like. South central, really not too far off the mark there. Mid to upper 50s, maybe pushing 60 up to around the uh, Fort Yukon and the uh, Yukon Flats region. Lower to mid 40s across the North Slope. So fairly mild conditions there. Southwest, you're looking at upper 40s and lower 50s overnight. And fairly mild out around St. Paul, St. George, St. Matthew, and into the central and eastern chain. Unalaska Dutch Harbor starting at 50 tomorrow, making it up into the mid 50s by the afternoon. Upper 70s to low 80s across the upper Yukon and into the upper Tananaw Valley. South Central warming up once again, mid to upper 70s around the Susitna Valley, Big Lake, Wasilla, Palmer, all the way down toward Kenai, Homer 74, 69 around Cordova. Southeast, you're looking at temperatures in the lower to mid 60s tomorrow. High temperatures in the morning on Friday, back in the mid to upper 40s for most of the North Slope, 46 around Kaktovik, Utkiavik, cooler 40 degrees. Unila Cleet, Nome, all the way out toward, uh, well, let's say Grayling, mid to upper 50s for you. Uh, the YK Delta is looking at overnight temperatures in the lower to mid 50s there. Bristol Bay temps in the lower 50s as well. Kodiak, friends there, 55 degrees. The Susitna Valley back in the lower to mid 50s. And then southeast in the upper 40s to lower 50s for most locations there. Ketchikan could be milder at 55. High temperatures on your Friday afternoon stuck in the 40s for the northwest coast into the lower to mid 50s around, uh, well, let's say, Prudhoe Bay, and Dead Horse, Kaktovik, 46. South Central, uh, temps will cool down just a hair, upper 60s and lower 70s there. Southwest in the upper 50s to low 60s. And Southeast, back in the mid 60s as you get into your Friday afternoon. Southwest, uh, that looks like King Salmon, probably looking at temps near 60. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. And on to aviation weather now, we'll continue to see uh, problematic smoke across the interior and across uh, areas in southwest. And at times around the Kenai Peninsula, probably won't be as widespread in the morning. But over the next couple days, if fire activity does ramp up, you're going to see a lot more of that around south central and especially around the Kenai Peninsula. Looking at southeast, IFR conditions will remain across the central and southern parts of the higher terrain there on the inside passage and across the outer coast. A better chance for marginal conditions, especially in the inside passage itself, all the way up to about Lynn Canal in the capital city, around Shelikov Strait and then all across the southern Bering Sea. A widespread area of marginal and IFR conditions should be expected by Thursday morning. As we get into the afternoon, look for IFR across the Bering Strait and across the Chukchi and Beaufort Sea coast. 
Uh, marginal conditions will likely push up onto shore and inland around the Kobuk and Noatak Valleys and across the Yukon Delta, Norton Sound, and across the central and western chain. We're going to see a better opportunity for convection as we get into Thursday afternoon. Widely scattered shower and thunderstorm activity should be expected here and there. And of course, smoke will still be an issue in many locations. Marginal conditions should continue across a large part of southeast. We'll see that set in with IFR as we get into your Friday morning. Some of that could push its way into the Lynn Canal. And across the higher terrain, many areas around Gustavus, Glacier Bay, and then up into the northern parts of the Gulf. I uh, should also expect to see at least some period of IFR. Marginal, I, uh, marginal VFR. Uh, will be expected across a uh, large part of the north and eastern gulf. Uh, still looking at VFR across most of south central, but we're dealing with smoke again in the morning. And like I said, this could increase in coverage and intensity as we get into uh, the next couple days there across the interior as conditions start to warm up. Marginal weather across most of the northwest and across uh, Norton Sound, Seward Peninsula, IFR uh, across the northern Yukon Delta, across southwest into parts of Bristol Bay. And the Bering Strait Coast, the Bering Sea Coast, too, across the Alaska Peninsula, as well as areas north of the Aleutians, St. Paul and St. George included. That should improve a little bit by the afternoon. I'm still looking for smoke and, again, a area of widely scattered shower and thunderstorm activity. A lot of that's going to be across the southern interior now, across the Copper River Valley, across parts of south central, including the Susitna and Matanuska Valleys, and across the Kenai Peninsula. But you'll notice that area has decreased considerably from what we see on Thursday, so watch for changes there. Marginal conditions continue across the north and across the Bering Sea with MVFR expected from Prince William Sound to the eastern Kenai Peninsula and all the way in the southeast. Here's a look at your pass conditions then. Anaktuvik and Adigan Pass, we expect to see VFR conditions continuing through your Thursday. Lake Clark and Merrill Pass will see a start around marginal levels and then some improvement as the day goes on, watching for convection there in the west and into Rainy Pass as well with a marginal start on your Thursday. Windy Pass, we expect to see VFR continuing throughout the day. A few shower and thunderstorms possible in the region. All the way into Isabel Pass with VFR. Mentasta Pass looking good. Tanita Pass, we expect to see VFR there. Watch for shower and storm activity in the region. Portage Pass, looking for VFR really most of the day. When you get into Chilkoot and White Pass, we'll start to see marginal levels uh, develop as we get into the afternoon. Not looking for convection in that area right now. Freezing levels show that coldest air is still well north across the Chukchi, but certainly levels are noticeably dropping to 4, 6, and oh, back down to about 8,000 feet for the Kobuk and Noatak Valleys and the western extent of the Brooks Range summits. 10,000-foot freezing lines showing up across the west and the interior east, as well as south central, and uh, the Aleutians looking at anywhere from 8 to about 12,000 feet. And for southeast, levels between about 10,000 feet around Gustavus, Chilkoot and White Pass, and down toward Petersburg, Wrangell, and uh, just uh, north of Ketchikan there with a level around 12,000 feet. Icing potential still pretty high up there, obviously, with those levels being that high. Moisture is pretty high up as well. So we're going to say above 10,000 feet for isolated moderate and the greatest risk of icing, not really in that general aviation sector right now. Watching for shower and thunderstorm activity, that of course implies the opportunity for um, at least a little bit of isolated severe. So keep your eye on that. We'll also see some areas of icing well above 10,000 feet across southeast. The jet stream has our broad, fast flow across the North Pacific, but mainly over the Gulf and into the Pacific Northwest. Levels there around 100 to 150 knots. Uh, easterly flow to westerly flow across the extreme southern parts of southeast with high pressure in charge of the Yukon and a western northwesterly flow coming into the northwestern parts of the state. You can see that at 9,000 feet, winds there at around 20 to 30 knots. An offshore flow blowing across south central, low pressure across the eastern gulf there, and high pressure sitting across the North Pacific. A very similar pattern here at 3,000 feet. Winds fastest around Nome, around 25 to 30 knots, and light westerlies coming ashore across southeast and a high pressure ridge across the Alaska Peninsula. So for turbulence, we're really going to be focusing on the northwest uh, around the Western Brooks Range with some considerable moderate below 4,000 feet. Welcome back to another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder. As you well know, you can get forecast information for any day of the week. Today, tonight, tomorrow, out to six or seven days. It includes the high and low temperature, the wind direction, the chance of rain or snow in your part of Alaska. But did you know that there is information available to forecast out to two weeks? So the question is, how would you use that information? And here to answer that question today and tell us a lot more about climate services from the U.S. National Weather Service Alaska region is Rick Toman. He's the program manager for the Climate Science and Services. And uh, Rick, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Dave. 
How would we use information that is out to two weeks instead of just the high and low and the chance of rain? Well, Dave, as we move out in time, of course, uh, forecasts become more uncertain. So as we move into that second week from now, we're not looking at specific uh, highs or lows or precipitation amounts at any given place. Uh, what we can do with the state of the science at this point is get a handle on patterns. Uh, so we can uh, say things like um, increased chances for uh, stormy weather in the Bering Sea uh, in two weeks, or we've been in a cold weather pattern, looks like uh, eight to 10 days from now, that pattern's going to change. Those are the kind of forecasts uh, that we can currently make in that second week. So you're increasing lead time for perhaps big or small weather events and telling us the likelihood of uh, maybe uh, more coastal storms or wind events in some areas? Uh, those are the kinds of things that, um, that we hope to be able to, to let Alaskans know in the, in the second week forecast. And if you have an activity or an event that you would find that kind of advance notice useful, whether it's moving stuff off of the beach, whether to go out hunting or to come back from camp, those kind of decisions, the week two uh, provides uh, the opportunity uh, for you to get a handle on that kind of information. Okay, what other type of weather impacts that we're familiar with might Alaskans use climate services for? Well, in the forecast realm, we can go uh, provide some information from this uh, week two, say the eight to 14 day period, uh, on out uh, to the uh, monthly and even seasonal time scale. Now those monthly seasonal forecasts are still kind of uh, just really very much pattern dependent and the amount of detail that we can provide at this point is still uh, pretty limited generally uh, indications of how temperature and precipitation will fall in, in uh, maybe above normal, below normal kind of range. Uh, but in the week two period, uh, we can uh, be considerably more specific than that as far as the general patterns and the really the impacts on Alaskans. Okay, so we would be talking about generalizations there that would, would tell us that the, the period might be more stormy, might be more hot, more dry, more cold, and th situations like that. That's correct. So we're not going to be able to say in which community, uh, for instance, there's the threat of coastal flooding, but we can, we'll, can often be able to tell we're moving into a pattern that would be conducive to big Bering Sea storms. So if you're in an area that that could potentially uh, impact you, you'll want to pay attention uh, to uh, the weather forecast. Okay. Now, every day and every hour of the day, the National Weather Service is working on a forecast for the next day. But how do you start your forecast process for that extended period that goes out beyond seven days? Well, the way things work right now, we start off with the expected general flow pattern uh, for a Alaska and, and the whole world really, we, and then we narrow that down to Alaska. So we start off with the basic computer model forecast. There's uh, quite a few different computer models that we look at, bring those together. And then another important part of that is we as attempt to assess the confidence. Um, the reality is often two weeks away, the computer models are very divergent. They have lots of different solutions. And that's an indication that we don't have much confidence. Uh, but when we see uh, more agreement in that time frame, and when that agreement is a pattern that will be potentially very impactful for Alaska or is a big change from what we've been in, that's when we can then take that expected pattern, we have computer models forecasting it, we've assessed the confidence, mm -hmm. now we can move that forward. How, using our experience as Alaskan weather forecasters, how does that uh, typically play out for Alaska? So is this a stormy pattern for the Bering Sea? Is this an extra rainy period for Southeast? Is this the kind of pattern that generates uh, strong winds potentially in, in the Anchorage Bowl? Is this a deep cold pattern for the interior? All of those are the kind of things that we're looking at in these large scale patterns. That's very different than telling you that the winds on 10 days from now are gonna be gusting to 120 on the hillside. We're looking for patterns, not, um, not the very specific information that the Weather Service will then hone in on as the event gets closer. So the idea is to keep the five, six, seven day forecast the same where you are getting the standard high and low temperature and the chance of wind or rain, 
but further out you get a broad general forecast, but as the time gets closer to that event, we'll get a lot more specific. That's that correct. Okay, very good. So how can people use this information if I am out in the bush and I want to see is a coastal storm expected in my region or is a chance for that improving over the next uh, two to three weeks? Where could I go to get information like that? When we see that uh, potentially impactful or a big change in the weather is coming uh, eight to 14 days out, uh, typically, we will uh, start to highlight that on uh, the Weather Service Facebook site. Um, we might produce a YouTube video uh, highlighting that, linking that on our Facebook site. Um, so often, we don't, at this point, we don't have much to say in that because we're really looking for those forecasts of opportunities. But one thing we can say very likely as uh, we go through the next uh, two or three years, there'll be more and more of this kind of forecast information available in that week two time frame. Okay, and something that emergency managers and city planners and uh, folks in villages might be interested in keeping an eye out for, uh, looking for that information to be headlined, uh, whether that's on social media or perhaps uh, through uh, uh, the National Weather Service channels there to get information from, like, uh, from you to make better plans a little bit uh, longer term and make uh, better preparations in the event that things become a little bit more unsettled. Uh, absolutely. Uh, uh, Climate Services uh, with the National Weather Service Alaska region is talking to uh, the state of Alaska every week, uh, apprising them of uh, that uh, two-week outlook. And, um, and uh, on the social media side, uh, we uh, are working to uh, keep Alaskans informed so that when we think we have uh, some confidence in a high impact or a big change, mm -hmm. to uh, that's the best way right now for folks to uh, find out about that. Uh, Twitter, uh, Facebook, so uh, uh, stay tuned to uh, your National Weather Service. Very good, a developing program. Rick Toman with the National Weather Service Alaska Region. He's a Climate Science and Services Program Manager. Thanks so much for joining us again, Rick, and I hope to have you back again soon. Great, thanks, Dave. For another edition of Alaska Weather Facts, I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder. We'll see you next time. And now, marine weather around Alaska. And on your sea ice update now, uh, we have a large area that's painted as marginal ice or less than 80% concentration. That goes as low as 10%. What the Alaska Sea Ice Program is telling us today is that a large area that is in this blue shaded region, generally north of the Beaufort Sea Coast and just west of Ukiavik, is really mostly open. It is listed as marginal, but there is a considerable area here that has extremely low concentration ice in that marginal zone. So keep that in mind there. That is probably good news if you're looking for resupplies uh, anywhere around the Beaufort Sea Coast, as uh, areas in the Chukchi have been generally uh, open for a considerable amount of time already this summer. And uh, noting the date, July 17th, that's pretty impressive stats there as we continue to look at uh, near record levels of low ice across the Arctic and especially across the Arctic coast. Here's a look at Thursday's forecast now as we get into the marine areas for southeast. You'll notice light winds uh, south and southwesterlies there, 10 to 15 knots, 2 to 3 foot seas on the inside. A very gentle onshore push anywhere from about 10 to 20 knots, the strongest of which will be up around Yakutat and Icy Cape. 20 knots with 6 foot seas there, 8 foot seas south of um, Port Alexander and into the Dixon entrance region with that 10 to 15 knot flow. You'll see a little bit more of a south and southeasterly flow. As we get into Friday, light southerlies across the inside passage, 10 to 15 knots and 2 foot seas expected for the end of the week. Across the Barren Islands on Wednesday, a stronger westerly push, 30 knots with 7 foot seas looking for light winds up inlet there, about uh, southwesterly, 10 knots, 2 to 3 foot seas. Northwesterlies inside of Prince William Sound and 10 to 15 knot winds across the northern Gulf, anywhere from 5 to 6 foot seas there. A gentle south and easterly flow comes in on Friday across Prince William Sound and outside of Hitchinbrook entrance, 10 to 15 knots. You're looking at west and northwesterlies across the Barrens, 25 knots with 5 to 6 foot seas, and that gentle up inlet flow continues from the south and west, anywhere from 2 to 3 foot seas max. Around Shelikov Strait, westerlies 25 knots and 5 foot seas. A west and northwesterly flow crossing the Alaska Peninsula is expected 5 to 6 foot seas. There may be 7 foot seas between Castle Cape and Chignik out toward Perryville. Westerlies coming off of Kodiak Island as well, 5 to 7 foot seas on either side. That flow diminishes a little bit more on Friday. Still looking at a, a north and westerly flow coming off of Kodiak around 20 knots, 20 to 25 around Bristol Bay and the Alaska Peninsula, anywhere from 6 to 7 foot seas there 
on Friday around the arm. As you get into the Aleutians, very light winds, high pressure still in control, areas of fog and strata should be expected through the period, with westerlies continuing through the chain anywhere from southwesterly around Kiska to Attu, about 20 knots and four foot seas there. Smaller seas, lighter winds across the central chain and a little bit of a stronger flow approaching the Alaska Peninsula and the eastern chain, 20 knots with five to maybe six foot seas there. Really no change there discernible on Friday. Looks for southwesterlies, maybe five foot seas out in the west coming up just a tad and five to six foot seas across the eastern chain out into the Alaska Peninsula. Still looking about 15 to maybe 25 knots south of Nikolsky to Unalaska on Friday. For the west coast, westerly onshore winds continue for the Yukon Kuskokwim Delta into Norton Sound, 20 knots and four foot seas there. St. Matthew looking for 25 knots and nine foot seas, six foot seas around St. Paul and St. George. As you get into Friday, look for a west and southwesterly flow, 10 to 20 knots, six to seven foot seas in all areas with the exception of inside of Norton Sound, 10 knots and two foot seas there. Easterlies continue for the Beaufort, 15 to 20, looking at three to four foot seas. Light winds across the Chukchi coast, 10 to 20 knots with generally a south and westerly flow, a little bit more of a southeasterly push coming off of Point Lay to Wainwright. You'll see a little bit more of an onshore flow developing. Remember, several waves of low pressure will be working their way in. And as they swing through the Beaufort, we expect the winds to pick up there from the west, 25 to 30 knots. Six foot seas expected in that region as we get toward Friday. Let's take a look at the maps one more time. Low pressure across the interior is expected to stir up some showers and maybe a few thunderstorms across the region as we go through tonight. For southeast, we expect showers there as well. Uh, not so much uh, as far as shower and thunderstorm activity goes, but generally light rain, let's say. Across the north and west, we can see a disturbance working its way into the east. And uh, ahead of that, shower and thunderstorm activity across the interior and south central should be expected. Smoke will probably pick up around south central, especially the Kenai Peninsula tomorrow and across the interior as wildfire operations continue. Uh, some of that uh, more of a controlled burn, which could generate even more smoke than you've seen uh, as of recent. As we get into Friday, the boundary drops southward toward the Brooks Range. It'll probably steer some stronger westerly flow into the Beaufort Seacoast, as we saw on the marine maps just moments ago. Shower and thunderstorm activity will probably diminish around south central and push eastward just a little bit more. We'll keep showers around in the forecast for south central and warming up out in the west. Showers will be possible around southeast as we go into your Friday afternoon and onward into Saturday. Much needed precipitation there. Your forecast is always on weather.gov slash Alaska. See you next time. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbormaster before you go boating.